When the Legends Die, Chapter 4. The star that was a hunter with a pack on his back was halfway down the sky in the northwest when she went out on the step and listened. Everything was quiet. She had made no light in the house, so her eyes could see in this darkness. As she waited, listening, she saw the horse weeds and the starlight and the shadowy trees and brush on the hillside beyond the valley. She went down the path to the alley, and nobody was there. As she came back, she saw the axe beside the kindling pile. She had forgotten the axe. She set it on the step, then went around the house. Nobody was in the street. There was a light in the house where Fred Badger and his woman Sally lived, and there was another light down the street, but nobody was watching. She knew this. She went inside and wakened the boy. She smoothed the bed, then whispered to the boy, Do not talk. Stay close to me. When I let go of your hand, hold it to my skirt and walk where I walk. We will make a game. She picked up the pack, put it on her shoulders, and they went out and closed the door behind them. She took the axe. They went to the alley and turned left, not the way her man had gone. After a little way, she let go the boy's hand, and he held to her skirt, and they followed a path up the hillside. They came to a street and crossed where there was no light and followed the path through the brush. Again, her feet knew the way. She had gathered wood for the fire from this hillside for almost two years. They came to the top of the hill and waited to catch their breath. In the starlight, she could see the road at the foot of the hill. The road led west towards Piedratown. As she followed the road 17 miles, she would come to the road that came up from Arboles on the reservation. There she would turn north, but tonight she would go only half that far to the stream for which she had no name. That would be as far as the boy should walk tonight. They went on, keeping to the hillside above the road, following the paths of the goats had made first, then the women used when they went to gather wood. In the starlight, her eyes saw an owl, two rabbits, a striped cat from town, a jay sleeping on a branch. She wanted to tell the boy, tell him how to see these things in the starlight, but not tonight, later, other nights. They were going away tonight, and they were not talking. They walked for an hour, and she felt the boy's tiredness as he walked behind her, holding to her skirt. She put down the pack and held him in her arms while they rested. They went on again. The star that was the hunter with a pack on his back was down near the horizon, making the big circle the stars made every night. The circle, the roundness. It was good to know the roundness, the completeness again, not the sharp squareness of houses and streets. Twice more they stopped to rest. The boy's legs were weary. She carried him in her arms for a little way, but he protested. He was not a baby. She put him down and they walked together again and they came to the hill at the bottom of which was the stream for which she had no name. They went down to the stream and drank and rested, then went up the stream to a grove of spruces with a deep mat of needles. She pushed the drooping branches aside and they went into that green spruce lodge and she spread the blankets and they slept. She awakened soon after sunrise and lay listening. The jays were scolding. A squirrel cried at them, and she knew it was only jays and squirrels. She tucked the blankets around the boy, who had half wakened, and told him to sleep. She took a fish hook and the spool of line and went through the dewy, heavy, dew heavy bush bushes to a grassy place beside the stream. She caught four grasshoppers, still stiff with the night chill, and went to a pool below a rapid in the stream. She put a grasshopper on the hook and tossed it out into the quiet water. The grasshopper struggled on the water, went this way and that, and there was a rush and a swish of water as a trout grabbed it. She caught four fish and went back past the grassy place and thanked the grasshoppers before she returned to the spruces for the knife to clean the fish. She gathered dry aspen wood and built a fire beside a rock near the stream where the thin smoke would, ri would rise with the morning mist from the water. And she put green sticks inside the fish to hold them open and set them against the rock beside the fire to cook. When they were cooked, she took them back to the spruces and wakened the boy and they ate. Then they went down to the pool and washed themselves, and they sat naked on a rock, clean and rested and fed, and watched the sun rise over the mountain on the other side of the road, half a mile away. 
She sang the song to the sun rising, the song for washing yourself in the morning when the sun is rising. She sang it softly, and the boy sang a part of it with her. He did not know all the words. She said he would learn the words another morning, as she had learned them from her own mother, as those words had come down from the mothers and grandmothers since long ago. They put on their clothes and went back to the spruces and packed their things. Then they went on again. That afternoon, they came to the place where the road from Arbolis met the road from Pagosa to Piedra Town. They sat in the scrub oak on the hillside and rested, and she watched the roads. Nobody came along either road. Then they went north where there was no road, but only the game trails. And before sunset, they came to the east branch of the Piedra River. There she caught fish before she and the boy followed a small stream up a rocky hillside and found a cave in which to spend the night. The next afternoon, they came to the foot of Horse Mountain. She did not go to the place where the black stem ferns grow. She turned the other way and went for almost an hour up a valley with a stream so small she could step across it. But there were fish in that water. She caught enough for supper and built a fire of dry wood and cooked them, but did not eat them. She wrapped them in leaves and climbed the mountainside, being sure they left no tracks, and went back down the valley half as far as they had come. There she found a place to watch the valley, and they ate the fish and watched the valley until the sun sank behind the mountain. Nobody came. They went to a big spruce whose branches came down to the ground like the walls of the lodge, and there they slept that night. They stayed there two days, eating berries, building no fire to make smoke or smell, and nobody came, neither the sheriff, nor Blue Elk, nor anyone. Then they went back down the valley and around the foot of the mountain to the place where the black stem ferns grow. She went to the spring beyond the ferns and found the sign that he had left for her a leafless willow twig that stood in a mossy place. She pulled it from the moss and found it had been peeled at the bottom. She put it back and chose two more willow twigs and peeled them at the bottom and thrust them into the moss beside it. Then she and the boy went up the slope to a sheltered place among the rocks and waited. From that place she could see the spring. He came to the spring that evening. It was dusk and she saw him. He stepped out of the deep shadows and took the three willow twigs from the moss and then he was gone. She said her thanks to the earth and the sky and the quarters of the earth and then she had done that she drew the blankets around herself and the boy and they slept. He knew they had come. It was not until the second day afterward that he came for them. He came where they were and he held her hand and he smiled at the boy. He said, they have not come, not yet come here. And she knew he had gone back the way she came, all the way to the road from Arbolis, and made sure nobody had followed her. That afternoon, they went over the shoulder of Horse Mountain to an old bear den under a down tree. They saw four spruce grouse sitting on a low branch, and while she walked in front of them to keep them watching her, he went around behind them and killed two with a stick. When it was dark, he built a fire inside the old bear den, and she cooked the grouse, and they ate. They were together. It was a happy time. The next day, they went down to the Piedra River and followed it to the Big Fork. They followed the Big Fork till they were at the foot of Bald Mountain. It was three days, and he carried the boy all the third afternoon. There, at the foot of Bald Mountain, they camped for two more days while he went back to the Big Fork to be sure neither Blue Elk nor the Sheriff was coming after them. Then they went to the far side of the mountain, and he chose a spot close beside a spring and built a shelter. It was the first week of August.